Happy birthday, dear Jory. Oh, thank you, Sapphire. And Mama, that was mighty sweet of you, too. <laughs> Georgie, here's your present. And the top one is from me. Mm, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Oh, yes, beautiful, Mama. <laughs> just the kind I love. <laughs> you are the sweetest Mama a man ever had. <laughs> now, open mine, Georgie. Oh, yeah. Let's see what you got here. Oh, honey, that's beautiful, too. I bet the same fella made that one made the tie. <laughs> <laughs> you like it, Joey? Oh, I'm crazy about it. Oh. Uh, just when do you wear this thing? Oh, you put it on when you feel lazy and just want to lounge around. Hmm. Well, I've been doing that for years, but I never knew they had no costume for it. Oh. <laughs> George, go on in and try it on. I want to see how it fits. Okay, darling. I got the sweetest wife and mother-in-law a man could ever have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Stevens. Good morning. Thank you. Ah, uh, there's some bills. Oh. Who's the matter, Sapphire? Strange. I think this is a birthday card, and it's in a woman's handwriting. Let me see. <laughs> it certainly is. Oh, well, it's probably one of the neighbors. Huh. But what neighbor knows it's George's birthday? I don't know, Sapphire. Huh. Oh, well, <laughs> it's not important. Ah! It's definitely a female. What do you think I ought to do, Mama? Open it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Sapphire? Happy birthday from one who loves you, your sweetheart. I knew it. That old goat's been running around here with another woman. Oh, Mama, do you really think so? Certainly I think so. I told you we shouldn't spend all that money on these birthday presents. 49 cents for our next time. <laughs> well, I can do better things than that with my money. Oh, Mama, I don't think a man George's age would start getting interested in some other woman. Sapphire age ain't got nothing to do with it. You know how your father used to run around. The only way I could slow him down was to take the tires off of his wheelchair. Birthday <laughs> for one who loves you, your sweetheart. You're right, Mama. Words don't lie. To think he could do a thing like this to me after all oh, I've been to him all these years. Hmm. Well, this is one birthday he'll never forget. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Ah. Two wonderful women. I love both of them. <laughs> well, how I look? Take that shirt off, you two-timing beast. Well, to tell you the truth, I wasn't so crazy about it myself, but I just didn't want to say nothing. That's not what I mean. Happy birthday from one who loves you, your sweetheart. My darling. Who is that from, George? Uh, who is it from? Yes, who is it from? Who, uh, who is it? Uh, look at him, Sapphire. He's starting to quiver like a bird dog. I said, who is it from? Now, wait a minute, honey. I don't know who the thing is from. For all I know, somebody might be playing a joke on me. Uh, I'd like to believe that. Honey, I'm telling you the truth. I don't know who it's from. you got to believe me. Well, all I've got to say, George, is that it looks mighty suspicious to me. But we won't say anything more about it. I'm warning you, though, if anything else like this happens, it'll be the sorriest day of your life. Honey, I'm going to get to the bottom of this, and I guarantee you there won't be nothing else. And don't wriggle that necktie. I'm taking it back. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thanks.
Thanks, boys. Uh, Kingfish, being as how this is your birthday and everything, you don't seem very happy. That's right, Amos. This is starting off like one of the worst birthdays I'd done ever had. Yeah, well, what's the matter? Well, just come in the mail and Sapphire, I swear, I gallivanted around with another woman. I don't even know where the thing come from. Mm -hmm. From one who loves you, your sweetheart. Oh, that's a funny thing. Yeah, well, whoever the gal is, Kingfish, it sounds like she's insaturated with you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I worried about. This birthday card might be only the beginning. Have this gal do one more thing like this and Sapphire find out about it. It's gonna be the end of everything. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do about it, Kingfish? Well, I got to find out a way who sent this. Then tell him I ain't interested. I loves only my wife. Uh, do you have any idea who it could be? Well, natural, I ain't looked at another woman in 25 years, so it must be from somebody I knew before I was married. That's the reason I'm checking on all this stuff here. Now, all these letters and autograph pictures are from gals that I knew before I was married. So I'm checking the handwriting to see if I can get a clue. Well, uh, I wish I could stay here and help you, Kingfish, but I got a taxi cab call over on 129th Street, and I'm late already. That's all right, Amos. Well, I'll see you. So long, Andy. That's all right, Amos. Well, I'll get back to this business here. Look, Andy. Yeah, Andy, but the uh, handwriting don't match at all. This one was Mary Ellis. Mm, Mary Ellis. I don't recognize this face, Kingfish. Oh, Andy, you remember Mary Ellis. She used to work in the big factory right outside of town. You know, they called her the Claire Bow of the turpentine plant. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, I got her now. <laughs> I remember when you picked her up after work and you didn't dare light no cigar near her for two hours. <laughs> yeah, but look, Andy, the handwriting don't match at all. Hey. Who is this one? She's a beauty. Oh, uh, that's Gloria Farnsworth. Matter of fact, I was engaged to her before I married Sapphire. Yeah, she's a likely prospect. <laughs> yeah, and the end, that's the gal who said she would always love me. But the only thing, the envelope was postmarked New York. She an actress, and I know she's been living in California all these years. Well, that lets her out. Well, that's the end of them. Andy, I at the end of my rope. Yeah. Well, uh, sorry I couldn't help you, Kingfish. Well, I better be getting on home. Oh, uh, wait a second, Andy. I'll walk along with you. I don't know how I'm gonna figure out who sent that card. Oh, wait a second, Kingfish. Hey, the bottom half of that post is anything like the top half. This is one show I ain't gonna miss. Hmm. <laughs> Look, Kingfish, if I was you, I wouldn't get interested in nothing like this. You was enough trouble already. Andy, that gal feeds look familiar. I seen her someplace. Well. Hmm, Gloria Farnsworth. Andy, that's the gal we were talking about. She in town. Yeah, well, she weathered the last 25 years uh, much better than Sapphire. Andy, it must have been Gloria who sent that birthday card. Is you sure that can't be? Andy, I'm positive that if I know Gloria, this is just the beginning. And if Sapphire find out a gal like that sent that card, they're really going to be trouble. It is, huh? And Andy, if you think that sign is getting a pacing, just wait and see what's going to happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Calhoun, I sure that's the gal. And she ain't forgot me over all these years. Now she coming back to make trouble between me and Sapphire. Uh, I see. Well, now, Kingfish, is you still got any feeling for this gal? No, Calhoun. After I married Sapphire, I forgot her. But I used to be crazy about her. But the flame is gone. Is? Yeah. You sure you ain't left the pilot light burning? I sure, Calhoun. This is the only woman that I love. Well, now, let me get this straight, Kingfish. You say that you could have married this gal, but instead, you married Sapphire. That's right. That must have been about the time that barrel of cider fell on your head and you were delirious for four weeks, wasn't it? No, Calhoun, I love my wife. But ever since this card come, she's been walking around with that eye going away and I packing up, looking her eyes. 
Well, now, in a case like that, the only thing to do is to put a stop to this thing before Gloria uh, starts a real campaign. Uh, why don't you call up on the phone and, 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 and tell her once and for all to forget about you? Tell her that you was a happily married man. You are right, Calhoun. I'm gonna take the bull by the home. Yeah, yeah, here's the telephone number in this ad here. At what a nine, uh, three, five, five, nine. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be firm with this gal. Yeah. I'm gonna tell her right off of the bat that she can't come no to Jewel or Moor around here. <laughs> Hello, did you see Ida? Would I like to speak to Miss Gloria Farnsworth, please? Well, I wouldn't have been in this mess if I hadn't been so charming as a young fella. <laughs> oh, hello, Gloria. This is George Stevens. G George Stevens? Why, George, I knew that you would call me just as soon as you knew I was in town. How are you? Well, I'm fine, uh, but there's something important I got to talk to you about. Now, you remember when, uh... George, you know a telephone is no place for two old friends to talk over old times. But, Gloria, I just want to... Uh, George, I've got to be ready for a rehearsal in just a few minutes. But, uh, why don't we have dinner together this evening at my hotel? But, Gloria... George, I just won't take no for an answer. I'll see you at 7 o'clock in the dining room of the Hotel Lenox Plaza. Bye. <coughs> George just phoned and he said he won't be home for dinner. On his birthday? Well, he said he had a very important lodge meeting that he just couldn't miss. And he'll have his birthday cake later. Lodge meeting? Ha! Oh, now, Mama, don't feel bad about it. George wasn't damn try anything after the way I spoke to him today. Hmm. Well, what are we going to make for our own dinner? Well, Mama, you know, I was just thinking. There's no point in fixing dinner for just the two of us. Why don't we go out tonight? Sapphire, that is a fine idea. Let's go to some real nice place. All right. Come on, let's hurry up and get ready, because I don't like to eat much later than seven. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, table? I'm supposed to meet a Miss Gloria Farnsworth here. Oh, I see. And your name, sir? George Stevens. Uh, just one moment, please. George Stevens, paging Miss Gloria Farnsworth. George Stevens, paging Miss Gloria Farnsworth. Miss Farnsworth is in booth number four. Thank you. The last booth on the left, sir. Ah, uh, thank you. Hey, <laughs> George Stevens! How do you do there? Excuse me. They sure got some slippery floors here, Gloria. Why, George Stevens, let me look at you. I don't think I would have recognized you. You certainly have changed. I is, huh? And to think that you used to call yourself the Rudolph Valentina of Marietta. Well, I was a kind of hot shot them days. But, Gloria, the reason I wanted to see you was because I wanted to ask you a question. Oh, but, George, there are so many questions I want to ask you first. Don't you remember that last date we had together? Why, we went canoeing out in the lake. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, I'll never forget it. The boat tipped over in the deepest part of the lake. Oh, what a rescue. Yeah, I remember that, too. I don't think I could drag you out by your hair if it happened today. Oh, well, I just had the wind knocked out of me. But, Gloria... What I wanted to ask you was, uh... Oh, listen, George, I'm starved. Uh, let's look at the menu in order first, huh? Mm, okay. Good evening. Good evening. Reservations for two for Mrs. Stevens? Oh, yes, of course. I have a lovely table for you. Booth three. Thank you. Please, it? Oh, yes, Mama. You know, George has promised to bring me here ever so many times, but he never did. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what they got on the menu. Hmm? Oh, I know what I'll have, George. Lobster Thermidor. 
Well, I just can't decide yet uh, what I'm going to have. Well, while you're deciding, I want to call the theater and let them know where I am. I'll be right back. Wasn't that an attractive woman, Mama? Mm -hmm. I, I bet she's some big actress. I bet she's having dinner with some big actor producer. Can you see who it is? All I can see is the back of his head. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Whoever it is has got a head shaped just like George's. Well, Mama, I guess all the bald headed men look alike from the back. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, what you gonna have, Sapphire? meeting you here. George Stevens. And you told me you had a meeting. And I told you not to trust him. And here is your birthday card. For just a moment, I don't quite understand. You keep out of it, you, you husband stealer. Husband stealer? Well, I guess I'd better be getting out of here. Yes, you'd better. George Stevens? Now, wait a minute, Sapphire. I can explain everything. You don't need to explain anything. I've seen everything I want to see. And as far as you're concerned, you and I are through. I never want to see you again. After 25 years of marriage, I end up with this. <laughs> well, I guess I'll try once more. You've got to let me explain. <laughs> Sapphire! Sapphire! Andy? Andy? Andy, <laughs> wake up! Andy, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, now look, Kingfish, you and Sapphire just got to get together. For one thing, a marriage that's lasted all these years shouldn't end this way. And for another thing, your cold feet keep me awake all night. But, Andy, all I know is... Oh, come on in, Amos. Say, Kingfish. Oh, hi, Andy. Hi. This thing with you and Sapphire is getting real serious. Look what they got in the paper here. Well, let's see what they got here. To whom it may concern, I am no longer responsible for the deaths of my husband, George Stevens. Signed, Sapphire Steven. Boys, this is the final blow. She done cut off my food supply. Uh, look, Kingfish, have you tried to explain this thing to Sapphire? Amos, she won't even talk to me. She won't answer the phone to or nothing. She's so jealous, she done lost all sense of reason. Well, there ain't no use in trying to talk to her now that the green-eyed monster done rat its ugly head. No, no, Andy. Sapphire's mama didn't have nothing to do with it. Uh, look, Kingfish. Did you ever find out who sent that card? Was it Gloria? I didn't get a chance to ask her. And what's more, I don't care no more. I know I ain't done nothing wrong. And a sapphire, he ain't got no faith in me. There ain't no sense in going on. Well, what you gonna do, Kingfish? I ain't gonna do nothing, Amos. I gonna get dressed and take care of a few little things over at the lodge. Then I going back to the apartment and pack my clothes and just disappear and call the whole thing a bad job. Uh, you say you going back to the apartment and pack? Yeah, I'm going back there. I'll leave this afternoon. Well, I'll see you later then, Kingfish. So long, Andy. All right, so long, Emma. Andy, just to think, this whole thing come about just on account of our little birthday card. And just because I had a birthday. Yeah. You know, Kingfish, I was just thinking, if you had never been born, you'd be a much happier man today. <laughs> Giving up the apartment. 
Yes, Mama. Tell him after what happened, I just couldn't stay here any longer. Tell him I'm sorry. All right, honey. I guess you're down the back someplace. I'll go down the back way. Sapphire. Look, Amos, uh, if you came up here to try to patch things up, you're just wasting your time. Well, maybe I am, Sapphire. But I got someone here with me who might help clear up a few things. Uh, Miss Wandsway, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Stevens. How do you do, Mrs. Stevens? Amos, how dare you bring this woman to my home? Oh, please, Mrs. Stevens, there are certain things you should know. I think I know everything I want to know. Well, in the first place, Mrs. Stevens, I never sent your husband that birthday card that Amos has been telling me about. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen or heard from your husband since we broke up so he could marry you. I suppose you can explain, too, what you were doing with him in the restaurant when he told me he had to be at a lodge meeting. Well, I can explain that, Sapphire. You see, the Kingfish was trying to find out who sent the card. And when he found out that Miss Farnsworth here was in town, he thought it might be her. Well, if there was nothing wrong with their being together, why was George trying to sneak out? I don't know, Mrs. Stevens, but there's something that I would just like to say. There are five very good reasons why I wouldn't be interested in your husband or anybody else's husband. I have a husband of my own and four children. Well, maybe I did jump to conclusions. I'm sorry, Miss Farnsworth. That's all right, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> well, I guess I'll be running along now. I'm so glad you came up, Miss Farnsworth. I am, too. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, and thanks you a lot. No, Sapphire. Oh, Amos, I feel so silly. Well, Sapphire, I tell you, just one thing. You shouldn't always believe the worst of the kingfish. I know. But there's still that card. Oh, forget the card, Sapphire. Now, you ain't gonna let a birthday card that you don't even know who sent ruin everything you built up for 25 years, is you? No, I'm not, Amy. Well, I know you and the Kingfish has had a terrible time of this, and... Say, why don't both of you drop up to my place tonight and we'll have a little delayed birthday party? Well, it's all right with me if it's all right with Joy. Oh, I'm sure you can talk him into it. Now, I hope I'll see you both up in my place later, together. All right, Emerson. Thank you so much. You are. Uh, Goodbye. Bye. Ruby, you are absolutely right. Thank you, Andy. Sure, I know. And, Amos, you did a smart thing taking that glory up there. Yeah, well, it worked out just fine, Andy. Whoever sent that card to the Kingfish sure caused a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll get it, honey. Oh, hello, folks. Hi, Come on in. Hello, Amos. Hello, Ruby. Ruby. Come on. Hi, Andy. Come on in the bedroom and take your coat off. All right. Well, Amos, how's every little thing? Oh, everything's fine, Kingfish. It sure is nice to see you and Sapphire back together again. Yeah, I couldn't stand them being separated another night. <laughs> yeah, and I sure is happy about it. But there's still just one thing that's a little bad. What's that? That's that birthday card I got. I still don't know who sent it. Oh, forget the card, Kingfish. Well, we are trying to, but there's still a little cloud hanging over Sapphire's head. I guess we'll never know. Oh, sit right here, Sapphire. All right, Amos. Well, now that we is all here, go we all sit down and have a game of canastra or something. That's a wonderful idea, Kingfish. I'll get the card table right away. Well, before we start playing cards and gabbing here, I gotta go in and kiss Abadella good night. You'll excuse me? Oh, oh sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good night, honey. Good night. Abadella, did you say your prayers? Not yet, Daddy. I was waiting for my kiss. Well, now you get up and say your prayers and get right back in bed, yeah? All right. Good night, honey. Good night, Daddy. And now, dear Lord, please bless Mama, Papa, our family, and all our friends. And I hope Uncle Kingfish enjoyed the birthday card I sent him. Amen. The Amos and Andy Show has been presented by Black, Milwaukee's finest beer.
The Amos and Andy Show is shown to our armed forces overseas on film.